Hello, welcome back to the Cricket Nerds. Today, James and I are going to be looking at today's games, Super Sunday, two fixtures, both our teams lost, but we're used to it at this stage, really. Um, but there were two pretty good games. Um, both went down to the last overs. Even one of the games, Polkut and Outrider has beat RCB by one run. So very close games, very exciting. And we're just going to be talking about what we think, what we've learned from this game, what it talks about going forward in the tournament. Um, so let's start with the Royal Challenger Bangalore game, in which um, there were some mixed performances. Players who haven't been doing so well this season kind of stepped up. Players that had been doing quite well this season tended to carry on doing well as well. Um, but it was it was a pretty decent game overall. Um, but there are a couple things. For one, there are some exciting signs for an England opening partnership of Phil Salt and Will Jacks. Uh, Phil Salt in particular, very impressive today, taking Lockie Ferguson for 28 off one over. Um, what did you think of that, James? It was pretty impressive stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean... It he started things off um, with a lot of intent. I think he tried to smash Mohamed Siraj over Cal corner, second ball, and it took a top edge, um, went over the third man for six. And that was like, that was the one kind of let off that he needed. And then he just mm. absolutely blitzed it. Um, he hits the ball so hard. Like any four that Phil Salt gets, he doesn't really do like the deft touch ones. It's like a, he'll smash it through covers or he'll smash it through mid wicket. And that's kind of the way he plays. And it, it was, it was very, very impressive. So yeah, him and Phil Salt, um, sorry. And, and Will Jacks, because uh, Will Jacks obviously coming in at three for RCB. I thought it was nice that he finally got a decent run, um, a, a decent go. The fact that he's been warming the bench at RCB for a couple of seasons now is pretty shocking because mm. obviously we've seen the amount of potential that he's got. And the the quality of player that he is already um he seems really accomplished so those two players as a as an englishman it's it's nice to see that happen um seeing the uh the informed son il narayan only get 10 off 15 that kind of i don't know if that's mean reversion i don't know if that's just him going back to type or <laughs> if he's just if if it's just a one off and he's still going to carry on smashing centuries um, but I think that that was quite a big impact for, for KKR because they're almost, I think they're becoming accustomed to having those big runs at the top. Mm. And uh, it didn't really seem like they had the powerhouse in the middle order like they usually do to to really propel that that innings. I mean, they ended up with 222. So mm. let's, let's preface everything with this IPL has been stupid in terms of the amount of runs. I think the boundaries need extending or something because the the it seems like nowadays 200 is under par in in most situations and that is ridiculous. Yeah, I don't um, know if it's I, I don't know if it's the impact rule that play that teams are starting to get used to the impact rule because last season the first half especially the impact player didn't really have much of an impact. We kept saying the impact player was a bit of a flop and I think we're starting to see very repeatable patterns in how teams are using that impact player. Um, and in terms of how it's affecting the batting, it, it's ridiculous. I, I don't know if this IPL is changing how batting in T20 is going to look um, because we already thought batters were, were going hell for leather, but it, it seems to be completely different now. Um, the, the amount of high scores there have been, like we look at Sunrisers, for example, is is ridiculous. Um, but I think with the way RCB bowled, they actually bowled quite well. It's the best they've bowled all season, really. Um, until those last two overs. I mean, there was that Lockie Ferguson over early on, but after that, he only went for 19 runs in his three overs after that, including including the wicket of Rinku Singh. Um, he also seemed to... They, they seemed to bowl well against Sunan Um It was quite clear. Let's just bowl him Yorkers. Yorkers, wide Yorkers. The odd bumper just to rough him up here or there and was effective. Sunan Ryan was, was neutered there. Um, but in terms of how... The rest of, of the batters went. I thought Shreya Sai looked very impressive. He's been quite slow all tournament, but he seemed to be able to find uh, find another gear, which was was good to see. Um, that's what Kolkata Knight Riders need. And really, Andre Russell, 27 off 20, 
he looked like Ramandeep Singh and Andre Russell had traded places a bit there. Um, but yeah, those last two overs went for almost 40 runs and, and that was a massive blow for RCB. It seemed to pull it back during those middle overs uh, and they just couldn't quite bowl it out. And I think that was the difference really that, that Kolkata Knight Riders batting at the end. Um, but what, from a neutral's perspective, how did you find that Royal Challengers went about their batting innings? Um, I think Kohli started off the exact right way and it's been really good to see that from Kohli. I think that's good signs for India going into a T20 World Cup. The fact that Kohli is just able to use his class but go at a high strike rate straight away. Recognising the situation, you need you know more than 10 runs and over from the outset. So let's get on top of it early. 18 off 7 and um, it was one of the weirdest dismissals the thing i've ever yeah, seen we've got to talk about it don't we so he he was he was very far out of his crease and um the but it was a full toss and he kind of obviously flinched as if it was a no ball but it was quite obviously not a no ball um but in his kind of flinch he just went to defend it and tapped it straight up to Harshit Rana. So one of the easier wickets that Harshit Rana will burgle in his life. Mm. Um, what you know, one of the greatest batsmen of all time has just tapped it back to you. But it was really odd. And Coley wasn't convinced about it, was he? He wasn't happy with the with the dismissal at all. No. What did you think about it? Like, as an RCB fan, I wasn't happy with the dismissal. I mean, it was I know they've got the technology which says, right, it's this far above the line, therefore it's a no-ball. Like, I get it being a no-ball. I, I do. Um, I mean, I think that there are a few things because Andre Russell had a similar delivery in his inning. Like, the first ball he faced was a no-ball, called correctly when they looked at the replays. Um, and then Coley got one that was that seemed like it should be a no-ball and then wasn't given. So it's kind of the opposite way around. Um, however... It's not like, I don't know, let's say three seasons ago, Cody gets out early with that sort of thing. You're like, oh, that's just ruined the game because RCB don't have any other batters. But mm. RCB proved today that they can take the games deep no matter what. And it's a, it's almost a shame that RCB are kind of finding their feet so late on in the tournament uh, at this stage of the tournament when they've already lost so many games because they were 137 for two at the beginning of the 12th over. They only needed 90 runs they needed less than nine and over from the last nine overs, which is pretty crazy. Like they should win from that position. Um, and I think if, if RCB had won a few games during this tournament, they would have cruised home. But when you haven't won any games, you, you kind of don't have that winning mentality. That's when you tend to make the mistakes. I think we saw it as the same with Punjab Kings today. Uh, when you've not got that winning mentality, you make those mistakes, you throw these games away. Um, and it was shown today. Um, but there were two surprises. Um, one, I know Mitchell Stark, like he's not been bowling well this tournament. Um, and, and again, he didn't bowl well today. The, the money's getting to his head a bit. Uh, but Khan Sharma, I mean, we started the last over needing like 20 something to win. Dinesh Kartik had just got out and it was like, right, we've got no chance of winning this game. And then he goes and hits three sixes just just nonchalant sixes against like one of the best bowlers in, in world cricket, even though he's not having a great tournament. I don't know. What, what did you think of that over? It was absolutely insane. Honestly, I, I started to believe <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, it was very entertaining. And I think it's always going to be very, very fun when a 36 year old leggy who has batted at a sort of nine for most of his life, does pretty well because it, it yeah. it's awesome but um yeah it, it just it was too little too late but it was awesome to see and that's that's the kind of cameo you need for yeah. um for, from the lower order he he's like a poor man's uh what's he called um rashid khan mm. <laughs> like a, a leg spinning all around that can hit you some some quick sixes at the end of a nice cameo yeah um but yeah, it couldn't quite go over the line. But I think RCB, they gave it a good go. They they mm -hmm. tried um, their best. And, and yeah, they, they had a good effort. They just couldn't quite 
close it out. Couldn't quite get that uh, that final run to take it to a super over, which I think everybody was kind of rooting for. Yeah. It almost needed which... for Khan Sharma to hit two singles or for them to hit two singles as opposed to trying to... Because if you hit once, if you need three to win off two balls, you hit a single, you need two to win. Anything could happen, couldn't it, off that last ball? If you go into the last ball with three to win, that's when it's a lot trickier because you kind of have to hit, go for the boundary option. Um, so, yeah, but it was... I mean, start bold well in the last two deliveries. Uh, got to give them credit there. Um, but yeah, not to be from RCB. They they just couldn't cross the T's, dot the I's in this game, which I think, as I said, if they'd strung a few more wins together this tournament, then maybe you would have seen that. Um, it's just unfortunate circumstances, I think, because we've seen today and and in their last game, the, the ability that RCB have with the bat. Uh, and today we've seen a bit, bit more with the ball. I think they had the right balance with their squad. Um, it's just a shame that it's happened at, at this stage. Um, but yeah, let's move on to Punjab Kings versus Gujarat Titans. And James, we'll come on to talk about it later, but you face the wrath of Rahul Tawatia yet again, um, just closing out the game. Um, but how did you think Punjab went about their batting innings? Um, poorly, I'd say. It was, um, it, I don't know. I feel like it's a very similar story most of the time. I, this time it wasn't Shashank Singh and Ashutosh Sharma that could kind of bail us out of trouble. And I think that's the reason we were sort of 15, 20 runs short in the end. Mm. Um, it wasn't the easiest track to bat on, that's that's for certain. And fortunately, we had Harpreet Bra uh, to to do quite well and get a cheeky cameo at the end um, and perhaps him Singh at the top. But yeah, we, we've got weird combinations at the moment. I, I don't know why Sam Curran's opening with himself. Mm. Um, it's the second game in a row that he's done this and I just I don't really understand it. No. Um, I, I just think we've got other people that could do that. We're in a poor situation where Jitesh Sharma doesn't seem to be able to buy a run. And like last season, he was really, really good for us. And he's been kind of the 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 next up-and-comer for India, even. And he just seems to have completely tanked in form. And our overseas players, and that's been the biggest problem this season, has mm. been... The overseas players just haven't performed. And that's what you need in a good side. You know, you look at yeah. Sunrise's Hyderabad and the form that Travis Head's in and Pat Cummins is doing well. Heinrich Klaassen's amazing. You look at Sunil Narayan and Andre Russell. You know, a lot of other teams have got their overseas that are performing. Yeah. And when they're not, it it's a massive blow because it becomes, it from, from what should be your biggest advantage in a lot of ways because you get to pick from the absolute best of the best in overseas cricket apart from pakistanis um you can have whoever you want and they will do really well for you except they're not yeah punjab at the moment they strike me as a team that if you are a punjab fan you're just miserable you are kind of mentally checked out of the tournament and you go into the games thinking we're probably going to lose this. Mm. But I think other teams will not really enjoy going against Punjab because they always come to the last over and they always seem like a team that could do, could actually pull off the win. Mm. You know, they, like Gujarat made a bit of a hash of chasing it down, really. It was not a high total and they made it look quite difficult, but it was only the you know, a, a really good effort by Rahul Tuatia once again, the, the ice man mm. who keeps a cool head um, that, that got him over the line. But yeah, I, I just, I think Punjab are like, they, they've just, they've been on the wrong side of a lot of close games and it's just not good enough from them. Yeah. But did, what, what did you, what did you think? Cause you're obviously more neutral to this game. Yeah. As a neutral watching, I felt like Punjab Kings were they're similar to RCB in that there's just a little bit too late in, in terms of some of the players coming to form. Like Harshal Patel bought extremely well. Uh, where was that in the first few games of the season? Um, especially at the death. Liam Livingstone, he seems to you know, he bowled incredibly well. Um, it was obviously the pitch for spinners and, and pace off bowling today. That was that was the key. Um and, and uh, yeah, I thought thought he bowled very well but yeah a little bit too late a little 
too late, I guess. I, I think there's with Punjab, I, I agree that they seem to be on the wrong side of a lot of close results. But I think that's because there were times in the games when they could have made a bit more of a, an effort. And then it feels like they're almost scrambling at the end to, to try and get close um, yeah. when they could have made better decisions. Like I felt like there were a few wickets that they gave away, for example, that, that if the batters were just a bit more patient. Like Shashant Singh and Ashutosh Sharma were tied down. But if they just was a, were a little bit more patient, just waited a bit longer, then they could have attacked at the death, similar to how Harpreet Bra went about it. Um, but watching Gujarat Titans, like it was... Obviously, for you, it's frustrating, but from a neutral's pers perspective, watching Rashid Khan and Noor Ahmed almost battle it out for who's the best. Um, they bowled incredibly well. And then Saika Shaw, the other spinner, just took most of the wickets. So he's probably just laughing to himself a bit there. Um, but yeah, th their spinners worked incredibly well. And Gujarat Titans, their batting has, hasn't has fired much of late. Um, David Miller's not in good form. But... I just thought Rahul Tawatia, he just came to the fore and, and won, won the game for them in, in good good style. So overall, Gujarat looked like the better team on the day. Um, but yeah. Punjab, just a few, just a bit more clinical with the bat. Just 20 runs mm -hmm. more, and, and that could have been the difference. Um, but yeah, it's not a good place for our teams. In terms of where yeah. this, this looks in the tournament, it's, it gives us a few clues as to who's pushing for for those top four places and who's definitely out the running. I mean, RCB are definitely out the running here. Um, even if they win all their games, I think they finish on 14 points, which unless there are loads of teams who are all finishing on the same sort of points, it's just very unlikely to happen. Um, Punjab Kings also struggling to make it. Um, but yeah, there seems to be a, a battle going on for that fourth place between Chennai Super Kings, Lucknow Super Giants and Gujarat Titans and to an extent Mumbai Indians. So, it's all very exciting there. Um, and yeah, still lots to come. Any final thoughts from you, James, and wrapping up this this video? Um, thanks a lot for all the support over this series of the IPL. Um, we are continuing to put out some, some decent content, so hopefully you're enjoying it and hopefully you're subscribing. Um, if you're up for being a member, that's... The, the number one way to support the channel as well. And we do do yep. quite a bit of members only content. So um, thanks a lot. And also big shout out to look who's watching, who has just got his six month uh, badge. You'll have seen at the start of the video, nice gold badge. So uh, yeah, big, big thanks to, to him and all of our members for supporting the channel. That's all I want to say. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate all the support. Um, and the IPL is not over. We're still going to bring lots more. So stay tuned. Even if our teams were out of it, we're still eyes glued to the screen, watching what's going on uh, because the World Cup's coming up. And and so we're going to start thinking about who's going to be the best players for, for each team sort of situation. So yeah, lots to look forward to. So thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.